today I'm going to talk about feature driven development with Mustang. And I will show you how we took the concept of product talks development and apply this to individual features. By the way, please do let me know if you're having problems hearing me, if I'm talking too low or anything like that. Um, so let's begin. Nostec is a feature-driven full-stack JavaScript framework that was made in Brazil, like many of us. Um, I am Anya. I'm a full-stack developer at a studio and one of the co-creators of Nostec as well. And I work alongside with Mataro, who's the author of Nostec and the head of product folks development at AE and also the organizer of this content lane. He is with us in the chat, so please do feel free to ask as many questions as you want. We'll do our best to answer all of them. With that said, let's start. First, I'll talk a little bit about the history of Nostec or in this case, it's sad backstory. It takes place way before we joined AE. Mortar was almost giving up on programming. I was in a position where my work was leading to more frustration than satisfaction in general, and we needed to do something about it. So we should open a coffee shop, right? It seemed like a great idea since both of us like, like coffee and has nothing to do with programming. And we could even build some nice apps to help us with the shop management, the supplies, the logistics, the finances. But weren't we supposed to scale programming? The thing is, we couldn't. This was not an option, and we knew it. Even working in a coffee shop, we would rather build our own apps instead of suffer with the already existing ones. So we started thinking about why we wanted to run away from programming in the first place. And I came up with a few things that were happening more than the variable amount of times. Those were being forced to implement the wheel, even working um, with a JavaScript framework, especially when JavaScript already had a solution for that specific thing, but that solution was not comfortable with that framework. Being locked to structure due to previous architecture decisions on a project. Sometimes you're not even the one responsible for those decisions, but the one who had to pay the price for them. Being forced to over-engineer over just to keep things from falling apart. And also having to glue all the bits together with multiple APIs that are not cohesive with that specific framework. I will explain each one of those in detail soon, and I bet there are people here who can relate to at least one of those situations, if not to all of them. As you can see, this is an accurate representation of some projects of capture. And even if you didn't have to deal with something this bad, chances are you are already working in a project on which the data journey looked like something like that, you take the data from the database and then it goes to a model, from that it goes to a service and then to a controller to be serialized and then to be fetched by the client. This serialized, dispatch it through some reducer and then later passed as a prop to some component to finally be rendered. You don't even need to be limited to just those steps. You can bring many more abstraction layers as you like. But in the end, all we wanted to do was to, some, to dump some database information on the screen. It was supposed to be easy, right? We have this token quotation slide to make our presentation look serious. It says, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And I'm pretty sure someone somewhere said it at least once. And we agree with that. OK, we know what the problems are, but what we really wanted them, what would bring us happiness? After brainstorming a little bit about it, we've narrowed down to five key happiness in those new things, which were feature-driven. 
it means that everybody speaks the same language. A feature is described with the same by the client in your ticket at your favorite project management tool and also in its component code, which implies that your code should be super easy and straightforward, which leads us to our second point. Just the logic, no glue code. Your code should look like a recipe. Just the logic, skipping all the boring parts that glue things together. Basically, a clear representation of the business logic. Matter is included. Everything you need for a real project should be part of the framework and speak the same language. No weird external leaves required to do simple things such as routing or any of those basic things you would need to make any web application. Coherence between the services. Features should be re easily reusable across projects. If they, especially if they were built in the same framework, it doesn't make sense that you can't just copy and paste code from one project to another. And of course, why not? Why not? Our waifu, or mascot if you prefer, is called Nulacham and she was conceptualized and drawn by Bianca Mortaro's real wife. Uh, she's a super talented artist who was kind enough to give us this beautiful gift. Up to this day, our waifu page is the most visited one on our website, so I know you guys love your waifus. If you're interested in Bianca work, please do check her Instagram and ArtStation links. So, as a prototype of our dream, we created a product crud that we considered perfect. We couldn't take a single line out of this code. We felt it was in its meaning. So it was just as concise as possible and also full stack. There is a raw SQL in this example to make it extra clear that this method is running on the server and it's being triggered by a click on the client. And by the way, don't worry too much about being able to read everything in those examples. These slides will be shared with everybody later. Also, the record of this presentation will be available to the public later. OK, we had this perfect code. Um, the problem is that it was just that, a piece of code that was not implemented in anything yet. So we needed a framework to make it possible. A new JavaScript framework. Who doesn't love him? Um, Mortal basically went to a basement for a night and came out one month later with most of in his hands. Uh, this is not entirely a joke. Most of it was really done in the single night. And up to this day, I still don't know exactly how he was able to accomplish this, but I guess it's best not to think too much about it. And how did he make it work? With the power of buzzwords. It's actually way too technical to explain the tail everything right now, especially because it will probably take the entire remaining time of this presentation, and it's not the point here. So I will just let you enjoy those beautiful buzzwords for a while. All of them are no such no real things, by the way. They're not like just random buzzwords thrown here just to distract you. They're very real. And we even got a new shine buzzword that sounds super legit, but was actually coined by us, which is feature driven. Yay. And now we've got no stuck. It means full stack with no configuration, and it's kind of a bad pun coined by Mortal, but it ended up ended up being the official framework name. It was made during a time where Mortar worked as a freelancer, so we treat one dev armies out there with special care and love. If you are one of them, we do love you. And of course, we had some challenges along the way. Since it's a full stack framework, to make it work, we needed at least two bundles, one for the client and one for the server. We needed to have reacted awareness over vanilla JavaScript. This is related to the next one, which is to be able to keep up with the red existing JavaScript ecosystem. So no, no stuck exclusive things whatsoever. 
This because the JavaScript ecosystem is way bigger than the React one, making it possible for us to not worry too much about competing with it, and also not to worry about having to reimplement the wheel for every feature we needed, knowing that these features were already implemented in JavaScript. And during the implementation of most of we stumbled upon some happy accidents, and those were none of the logic being hidden. Most of code is super easy and straightforward, and this is a consequence of our no glue code policy. Horizontal code. You can move files around the hierarchy without worrying too much about breaking something. It's super helpful when refactoring and moving things around. We've got flexibility to keep up with scope changes. You don't need to commit to previous choices. It's super easy to change anything, anytime. This is a direct result of being feature-driven and also of the horizontal hierarchy. We've got shared state between the whole application. We were aiming for something like Redux, but got something way better than that. I'll be talking a little bit more about it soon. Um, and this is also related to the two bundles things and also to both flexibility to move things around and to keep up with scope changes because you don't need to worry about drop streaming help, for example. And no stacks class based. Uh, this was a choice made in order to allow us to have reactive awareness over vanilla JavaScript. Um, we are not super over dramatic about classes. We know you guys do love your functional components. So we have some true functional components. Stateless components, like this one in this example, can be just functions. But stateful ones make use of classes exactly to avoid reinventing the wheel for both holding variables and memo memoizing functions. Vanilla JavaScript classes allowed us to do so, and we are taking advantage of it. No stack is a full stack framework, so it does have a full stack lifecycle that was aimed to be as simple as possible. It's composed of just five methods. The first lifecycle method is called prepare. It runs before the first time the component's rendered, and it's useful for filling the screen with mock data or with a loading screen state. In this example, uh, it's just being used to get the current date before doing everything else in this component. The second one is initiate, which can be a sync and runs right after the component's rendered for the first time. It's useful for bringing stuff from the database into the application state. And in this example, it's being used to attribute the state variable task with the daily task retrieved from the server using the previously set date as a parameter. We've got hydrate, which is async and runs only in the client. It's a good place to trigger dependencies that manipulates the DOM or can run just only on the client side. And in this example, we are setting an interval that logs the date in the client every second. Uh, this is just for educational purposes. Of course, I don't think you will use it on a real application. Uh, we've got the date, which is also a sync and runs on every component every time the application state changes. And even though it is a sync, it doesn't block the render. This method's kind of rare to be needed. Um, and in this example, we are using it to check if the current date has changed. Since the dates assigned in the prepare, one could have let the app open from one day to another. And if it's the case, we trigger an initiate again to retrieve a new daily task from the server. Um, be careful not cause infinite loops with it. Note that we are not changing the application state inside of it, and we just retrigger the initiate if the date really has changed. Otherwise, we don't do nothing. And the last lifecycle method we have is terminate, which is also a sync and runs in the client after the component based the DOM. 
it is the place to clean up whatever you set up in the hydrate method. And in this case, we are cleaning up our previously set interval. And as you might have noticed on our update example, lifecycle methods can be more manually called whenever you want. They have no special hidden side effects, so you're free to trigger them as you see fit in your applications. Uh, in this example here, we have a handle click method that triggers the component to initiate again. It, it, it would be like a reload button or something like that. And then we've got more code examples to help you contextualize the concepts. Um, in this example, uh, we've got the server to client lifecycle initiates bringing data from the database by calling this get price method. This data is then assigned to the variable price, which is then used in the form below as a bind. I will be talking a little bit more about the bind soon, so please keep it in mind. Um, hydrate is then dealing with the DOM by giving focus to an input as soon as the page finishes rendering. And also you can note on the render method that self is actually self-aware of its own lifecycle state. So in this example, if it, if it was not pre-rendered nor initiated yet, it returns false, meaning this component won't be rendered. Uh, this is code from a real AE Comfort project. Um, the point of this example is to show how simple NoSQL code can be. Um, it's very good for onboarding new people on a project, and those people will be able to make um, some meaningful contributions from the first day. Uh, in this case, we are just getting all the users from the database and showing it the screen. Um, you can see we are just like assigning all the users to the variable users and then mapping through it and rendering one user card for each user there. This is a feature-driven example. This is an entire feature. This is a full logging system. No logic is hidden. It can be copied and pasted in any new project. And we just wanted to flex about the fact that this component has only 46 lines for this entire feature. And we've got, of course, the holy trinity of progressive web apps. We've got SEO through our server side rendering. We've got PWAs. Every application you you start with NoStick is PWA ready. We've got lightweight API requests because we optimized our API requests to the max. I will explain it a little bit soon as well. This is the transpiled client code. And in this case, you can see that the attempt login function was replaced for nostec.invoke. So the client does not have access to the server code. It can just invoke it. And all of the classes are hashed out and safe listed. So this client class can only invoke its own counter counterpart server class methods. And only if the hash matches, we cannot call arbitrary code from the client. And this is how the network requests look like. As you can see, we have three different requests, uh, each one for one of the server methods we declared before. Uh, this just happens after the first render because for the first render, we actually retrieve all the information we need from the server. The server will just call some local functions generate some HTML for you, and the client will receive this ready HTML, and only the subsequent requests will be actual requests to the server. This, this is a great optimization both for SEO and performance and everything else you might get from server-side organizations. 
We've got a virtual pipeline. Um, we check if the value of our states has changed and if you have to re-render or to change something or on your DOM. In this case, we've got this count. If the count is even, it renders the even component, otherwise it renders the odd component. And each time the count changes, it will re-render just the part that matters. It won't re-render the whole thing. Well, Nostic is actually an amalgamation of different things we liked. So from now on, I'll be presenting the concepts that it's inspired us and where they came from. From React, we've got JSX, but with variables that are closer to vanilla JavaScript. Those variables are mutable, um, but optimized to only re-render re when the main thread is idle. And we've got no memory scattering, therefore no cache busting. Uh, so we made a decision to make use of mutability. Um, every time a state variable value changes, it actually changes in real time. So we've got this example of uh, React code versus Nostack code. Uh, while we React, every time you set the value of a variable, it will just update after the next uh, cycle. Uh, in those that it updates in real time, you can set the value three times, and in the last time, its value will be three instead of one. And that, that's very good. That That's supposed to be more easy and straightforward for developers out there. From Amber, we've got dependency injection. Um, all the information you need given to you as an argument on every function and all the features look exactly like the same as you can see we are passing a router here we are passing our environment we are passing our database information all of them are just keys uh, being passed in the context so no different behaviors for different things all, all of them behave the same and from view, we got this bindable state, which means you can bind a variable to an input, for example, and every time the, this input value changes, the value of your variable also changes as well. Um, and you can bind any level of reference and also any type of data. Uh, for example, if you set an input to be of type number, and you change uh, its value, it will remain being a number. You don't have to worry um, about your inputs becoming strings, for example. Uh, we handle that for you. Uh, from Svelte, we got some compile time tricks to make the performance even better. And this is an example of Nostack code versus the transpiled code. In order to make the lookup a little bit faster, uh, Nostack tells JavaScript that coin equals uh, this dot render coin. So it doesn't have to look up for it at every render. And the same happens for source equals this in order to set the correct context to the onclick event function. In this case, this load more function, as opposed to it to have to traverse the entire tree to find this function. Um, and from GraphQL, we got the ability to just get information you actually need, but we kind of warmed up this concept and now we can uh, execute microservices without thinking about them being microservices because they are just functions that run the server and we call them server functions. Um, any method declared as static and async will run the server and will be its own microservice as you saw in the network requests before. And from Redux, we got the idea of what not to do because none of us really like the way Redux works. 
um, I'm sorry, I had to do it. I think the concept of Redux is pretty good, but I don't, I'm not very fond of its implementation. But then we've got Mobix, which is kind of like Redux, but way better. So we got this idea of using proxies from them, and that allows us to have um, shared context between the whole application. Uh, in this case, you can see on this async login that we are taking the entire context here and assigning new keys to it, like this me and a new router URL. And also in the second example, we are just taking the me because this is the, the key we are actually using here. So it's super optimized as well. And now I will be talking about a bunch of cool NoStock exclusive stuff. I will not be able to cover all of them because probably we don't have enough time for that, but I will talk about the coolest ones. We've got this context, which is a single reactive object passed down to every function as an argument. And it does not depend on the position of this function in the virtual tree. This context is horizontal. So every component has access to any key it would like to use. Um, also, the context is composed of three different parts, which is the framework state, the application state, and the component state. So we do have degrees of contexts. Um, yeah, in this example, you can see we're receiving a count and rendering it in case it's not no or zero. And in the second one, uh, we are taking the entire context so that we can assign a new key to it. And now this new key becomes available for the whole application. We've got inner components. Uh, which means you can break your component in smaller parts while keeping the same file scope. Uh, it helps avoiding props really hell. But of course, if you would like to, you could like just copy and paste this piece of code into another file and call it tab bundle and render it the same way. It will just be in another file. So you're free to segment your code the way you like. Uh, I really do like inner components because sometimes you're not going to reuse them anywhere else in your application, just in this page. So it makes sense to keep it in the same file. But if you realize later that, oh, you are going to use it somewhere else, you just export as a normal component. You can just copy and paste the code. Oh, also about the inner components, I forgot to say that anything that starts with render uh, becomes its own memoia, memoia, me, I hate this word, memoized inner component. So you can call it the same way you would call any other component. We've got native roots, which uh, shouldn't be a surprise, but since some frameworks, some popular frameworks out there do not have it, I guess it's worth mentioning it. Any elements can be a root, and roots can be nested as well. And links are simple A tags, as they, are, they were supposed to be. Your application won't stop being a simple page application. You can link to other pages of your application using anchor tags, and it will understand. To specify a root to a component, you just use this root attribute. And then you can, for example, have a couple of, of components that render on the home page or at every page, and also have nested groups, as you can see on that page slash slug there. Um, and we've got workers, so you can be notified on the network state for every server function. Uh, we can skip loading logic by default, and the server does not need to calculate loading states. You can just um, check if the worker is still fetching something and then render some loading animation on your screen. 
uh, we've got persistent components that, as you might have guessed, are components that persist. And to make use of them, you just have to pass this persistent attribute when instantiating the components. And uh, they will run prepare and initiate only once and stay in memory even after leaving the DOM. Uh, they will rerun the hydrate every time they re enter the DOM to keep the component fresh. And here we're making both the playlists and the favorites uh, persistent components. And since in our example, each playlist is static and it's not going to change, we don't really have a hydrate method in this component. It will just uh, be amounted, uh, kept in memory. And when you mount it again, like when you visit this page again, it will be brought back from the memory directly to your screen. Um, and for the favorites, on the other hand, they change all the time since the user can favorite or favorite the content whenever they want. So we have this hydrate to get the favorites from the server whenever uh, this screen or this component we enter the DOM again. We've got this token human agency slide. In the case you don't know, here at AE, we care a lot about human agency. So Nostuck have a lot of cool features that are super agency increasing for devs, and I show a couple of them for you right now. You can modify anything, even the render ending. You can inject your own code in Nostack at runtime and change how it renders or how it works with lifecycle or how it star states or anything. Some guy even rewrote it to use Portuguese tags as a joke. As, I, as you can see, the settings to do so was super easy. It's just like mapping one name to another and it works. Um, you can mutate the context at stars time. So nostack.start returns the context for that environment and you can do anything with that object, even define a um, synchronous type function that runs when the, when the application loads and populates the context before the application starts accepting res requests. Uh, so it's way before the render, for example. And you can even manipulate the server and use express middlewares if you like. You can even import a manipulator application context outside of Nostack. Uh, in this case, we are using it to create a simple script that sits the database. It just takes the database from the context populates it, and that's it. It's done outside of Nostack. Um, you can modify the state of any instance from anywhere. You can call methods from the outside. Um, you're free to shoot yourself in the foot as well, I guess, so be careful. Uh, note that you can both evoke instances outside of them and also evoke their own methods. Um, and this is pretty useful when you just want to have a single instance for a component, like a single to like thing. Um, then we've got this business thing. Uh, if you want to get investors or if you want to be a startup, Nostra can help you as well because you can reuse components across projects. So if you're building a new MVP and that MVP happens to use some features that you've already implemented in a project in the past, you can basically copy and paste stuff and have those features ready on your new project. So that means you can deliver MVPs like good and quality MVPs super fast. We've got performance. Uh, so since we are aware of the whole environment, it kind of allows us to make some uh, pretty good optimization for each scenario. Um, manually optimizing each scenario would take forever and still would be worse than the autom autom automated uh, performance optimizations we did. 
Uh, here is an example of our website, uh, which uh, has 100% on each one of those performance points. Uh, our website has a couple of images and even some animations, so this is really something. Uh, please note that this test was not made on Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi networks can actually affect the velocity of, of your requests. But even so, it's pretty good, right? And if you liked what you've seen so far, you'll be happy to know that we need your help. And how can you help? Um, you can tell your friends about Nostec. You can create projects with Nostec. You can try to find bugs in Nostec. Good luck with that. And you can also help us by improving our documentation. You can read all of our documentation at nostec.app. And if you happen to create a project with Nostec and like it, you can also leave a star on GitHub at our Nostec repo. Um, you can also help us with improvement issues on our GitHub. So far, we've got rid of all, all, of every known bug we had. So we just have some improvement issues to be implemented. Um, and we also have a Discord channel where you can talk about Nostec and share your projects there. We'll share the link with you guys soon. And a good place to work with Nostec is at AE. We are hiring fast learners that get shit done. If you are one of those people, please do hit to, to reach out to us. And thank you so much. Uh, if you've got any questions, please do feel free to ask them. I'll be there for a while. And also Martha will be there helping us with many complicated quest, uh, questions we might have. <laughs>